Uh, hello, everyone. In this lecture, we will study the uh, Hamilton, uh, Hamilton cycles and the Hamilton paths. So Hamilton cycles and uh, paths. And the problem uh, dates back to uh, an old question of uh, William Hamilton. So uh, he asked that how to determine a root on the side of the uh, the decahedron that uh, start started at some corner or vertices vertex and. Uh, returned there after uh, having visit, visited each other corner exactly once. And the uh, um, graph he considered is as follows. So you have pentagon uh, in the exterior and the inside you have a smaller pentagon and you connect uh, the sides of the pentagon. Okay, and inside you have a uh, pentagon upside down. Okay, and uh, then inside uh, the middle pentagon, uh, you denote the middle point of each side and then do the following connection. Okay, so this is uh, the decahedron, and if you count, you will find there are uh, 20 vertices and uh, uh, then 30 edges okay of course uh, this is just a special graph more generally we can have the following uh, mathematical formulation uh, given a graph G can we determine a root along the edges of G uh, that begins at some vertex and then returns return there after having visited each uh, ver vertex uh, once, exactly once. Each, each other vertex exactly once. Okay, and uh, a solution is called a uh, uh, Hamilton cycle, and uh, uh, a Hamilton cycle uh, a graph. Oh, order n 
is a cycle of lengths n. So, uh, use a previous notation. We can write it as x one, x two, blah blah, x n, x one. Since it's a cycle, x one to x n. Uh, just some permutation of the vertices uh, of the graph. Okay, and uh, similarly, we can define what is a Hamilton pass. So Hamilton pass in graph G joining vertices A and B is a pass. Uh, alpha x1 x2 sorry gamma a equals x1 x2 blah blah x n equals b or less n minus 1 so here uh, we also assume that uh, g is o order n And uh, uh, we can have another equivalent description of the Hamilton pass uh, as follows. So this is a permutation of the n vertices of G in which uh, consecutive vertices are joined by an edge of G. Okay, next, uh, let's explain a little bit about the uh, graph. So uh, from previous lectures, we know that for a graph, there's some ambiguity in different uh, textbooks, so some when you see graph, some mean general graph, some mean simple graph. But here, in the problem of Hamilton, uh, there's no difference. So, general graphs do not make difference for our problem. Actually, we can do the following reduction. Uh, suppose uh, you have a set of all general graphs, and uh, we are going to construct a onto map from this to simple graphs. And uh, here, V, E, M alpha 1, M1 alpha 1, M2 alpha 2, blah, blah, all the way to uh, the symbol graph with a vertices set V and the edge set uh, E theta, which is uh, replace the Multiplicity, so here replace the multiplicity by 1. So that's why we call it a reduction. And uh, since for, uh, so the important thing is uh, for Hamilton cycle or Hamilton pass, uh, there's no difference. So, therefore, in the following, we assume all the graphs are simple. Uh, this assumption uh, work, works only if uh, we are dealing with a Hamilton cycle problem. 
because for the Eulerian trails, it's easy, it's easy to see that a general graph is different from the simple graphs. So no matter w which uh, graph you have, if you double the multiplicity of the sides, then you can always find a Eulerian trail. Okay, so that's why uh, the multiplicity is important in that problem. But in this problem, whenever you have a Hamilton cycle, you can only pass one vertices uh, once. So you can one line in, one line out. So even if you have several multiplicity, multiplicity is not one for some edge, you can only pass it at least once. At most once, sorry. So no difference to consider only simple graphs. Okay, and uh, now let's uh, enumerate certain examples. So for example, the most trivial one is a complete graphs Kn. So that means you have m uh, vertices and connect each each pair by an edge. Okay, so totally you will have m factorial pass and m minus one factorial Hamilton. So this is Hamilton pass. So Hamilton cycles. Okay, and uh, example two is uh, Gary Cole uh, for n dimensional uh, cubes for um, n dimensional cube we learned uh, before when we study the permutation uh, you can look at look back to find the exact uh, definition of Gary codes so that's uh, very interesting because later on we will have we will have a sufficient condition to guarantee our Hamilton cycle and uh, uh, a simple form form is that the degree of each vertices or each vertex if at least half of the number of uh, vertices then there must be a Hamilton cycle but this for Gary code the degree is way smaller than the total number of vertices. Okay, so why this is true? Because the necessary, the sufficient condition works for all, all graphs. Okay, even if you have very bad structure, it's very random. But actually random is not very bad thing. So if it's totally random, we can use some other way to deal with it. Okay, and for the Gary codes, you have a very nice structure we discussed before when you generate permutations for Gary, generate all the Gary codes. Okay, so next, uh, let's look at some example before some other example before we start the uh, uh, discussion of the necessary condition. So for example, suppose you have the following uh, graph. Okay, and uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, A, B, C, D, F, E, A. This is a Hamilton cycle. And the A, B, C, D, F, E is a Hamilton pass. And if you remove uh, two edges from the above uh, graph, we can derive the following uh, subgraph A B sorry A B C D E F 
then still A B C D F E is a Hamilton pass, but then there's no Hamilton cycle. The reason is uh, if you break C D the graph. Should be connected if there's a Hamilton cycle. But of course, this is this is wrong. After you break C D, the path C D, the graph is disconnected. Okay. And uh, so let's recall. This is an example which uh, will give you um, a lot of hints when we describe the necessary condition. So just a little bit uh, recall of the Eulerian trails. For that problem, actually, we have very good understanding by the very clean criteria. You only need to test the uh, parity of the degree of each vertices. Or oh, each vertex, okay. But then for the Hamilton cycle problem, the situation is more complicated. So there's no easily uh, variable criteria. And uh, no uh, satisfactory algorithm therefore so whenever you have this situation the problem becomes complicated but also becomes more interesting because you have a lot of room to make your own structure you can give correct um, conditions to guarantee one Hamilton cycle, or you find some criterion to disapprove the existence of Hamilton cycle. This is just like if you know a little bit, or you have interesting of the knot theory, just like in three dimensional space, you have knot, and how to tell this knot is not trivial. So people develop a lot of polynomials to detect that, but those polynomials not sufficient, they're just necessary. So there's no one-to-one -one necessary and sufficient conditions, but just give you some information of that. Okay, those are interesting problems. Also, you have another possibility. Under certain conditions, you can largely simplify the question and construct a good model. Okay, so even if people are not able to deal with the most general questions, they can still work in your model for a lot of um, interesting situations, just like uh, in algorithm, you have the uh, simplex, simplexial algorithm. So those algorithm is, in general, is faster than uh, some other algorithms, but it doesn't work for all questions. Okay, so in some words, people will, people will just describe it as it works for the problems, it works. Okay, people still use that a lot in mathematics, in uh, math labs. Okay, so turn back to this question, we want to find, just like give an upper bound or lower bound for some uh, enumer enumeration problems, find the sufficient conditions Uh, to guarantee a Hamilton cycle. Or we want to find a necessary condition, find the necessary conditions to claim, claim that there's no Hamilton cycle.
and uh, for the necessary condition the so first thing is uh, if you if we have such Hamilton cycle at least the graph should be connected so I call it uh, condition zero G is connected this can be verified by the definition second thing is uh, no bridges uh, as in so let's call this as dumbbell so for uh, the condition one we can have the following uh, more precise description on edge of a connected graph is called a bridge provided its removal from the graph uh, leaves are uh, disconnected graph okay then we have the following theorem a connected graph uh, all the three or order n at least three with a bridge does not have a Hamilton cycle. Okay, so proof suppose alpha x, y is a bridge of a connected graph G. So let's uh, take a subgraph G prime of G as follows. So G prime is V. Oh, so let's assume G is V, E. Uh, G prime is V, E prime, where E prime is E get rid of the edge alpha and then claim G prime has two connected components Uh, so since we are going to use this um, claim later on in another theorem, we'll prove it rigorously here. Although when you think about it, it's, n it's almost uh, obvious, but when you really uh, sit down and uh, try to prove it, it's still tedious. And uh, so suppose... Uh, Okay, first thing is, because it's a bridge, after you break it, G prime has at least two connected. Oh, I should, uh, I should mention that in your textbook, there's another proof. Two connected components for alpha is a bridge. Therefore, in the following, we will show that uh, it's impossible to have at least three components. So if G prime has uh, K, at least three connected components, G1 prime, G2 prime, G3 prime, blah, blah, and uh, then take vertices 
x1 in g1 prime x2 in g2 prime x3 in g3 prime and find paths gamma 1 2 and uh, gamma 1 3 in g so this is crucial not in g1 prime or g2 prime because after you break it break alpha you don't have connectivity on you only have connectivity in g okay yeah so here I should uh, emphasize that the original graph is connected. Okay, such that uh, joining, such that joins uh, x1 and x2, x1 and x3, respectively. So in other words, uh, gamma 1 joins x1, x2. Gamma 1, 2 joins x1, x2. Gamma 1, 3 joins x1, x3. OK, then. Uh, we can write down the uh, the path in the following way, and actually here uh, you have two possibilities: either you go from x to y or from y to x. So first, note that uh, gamma one two must contain alpha; otherwise, because you only take off alpha, remove alpha from G, if from x1 to x2, a path from x1 to x2 doesn't contain alpha, then G1 prime and G2 prime are in the same connected component. So you have contradiction. Okay, so let's call this the, this, the, uh, this triangle. And uh, similarly, gamma 1, 3, uh, we'll have two possibilities. And let's call this square star. Okay, if uh, we have the case star and uh, uh, square, then uh, we call the second half of the pass gamma one two uh, check and uh, second part second part uh, second half of the pass gamma one three gamma one three check and then consider negative gamma one two check plus gamma one three check so what's that so negative gamma one two you just reverse the uh, direction Then you start with x2, blah, blah, and all the way to y to x. So this is negative, gamma 1, 2, check. Oh, sorry. Uh, the second half is taken starting from y. Okay, then for the gamma one three check, 
you can write it this way, in this way. Okay, so when you join them uh, at a vertex Y, you have a new path, at least a new work. Sorry, uh, more a new work, gamma 2, blah, blah, Y, blah, blah, gamma 3. So what does that mean? That means then x2 and uh, x3 are in the same connected components component, which is a, a contradiction because we assume uh, x x two and x three are taken from different connected components. Okay, then you have uh, another possibility. That is star plus star. Okay, then you have x one blah blah, x y. X two, so let's call still call this second half gamma one to check, and then for the other part, uh, for gamma one three, you take the first half, so call it gamma one three hat. Okay, then consider. Gamma one three hat plus gamma one two check, so x one blah blah all the way to y. This is gamma one three hat, and then you have y all the way to x two. So gamma one two check. Okay, then uh, a new pass, a new work. Sorry. Uh, more regularly, it's a work. There might be some repetition of vertices in the work. A new work at, uh, joins x1 and x2. So this is a contradiction because we assume they are in the different connected components. Okay, actually, uh, there are more uh, possibilities just like you had a triangle and a square, triangle and a star. But the idea is the same, so I omit that. And after all, we prove the claim that there uh, are exactly two connected components after you remove a bridge in the graph, in the original graph. Okay, now let G prime uh, be G1 prime, this joint union of G2 prime. So this means uh, G1 prime, G2 prime are connected components. Okay, and uh, suppose G has a uh, Hamilton cycle gamma okay then take x1 in g1 prime and uh, x2 in g2 prime then since uh, gamma is a Hamilton cycle so uh, you can rearrange the cycle by choosing the uh, starting point, then you you will find x one appear at a one vertex in the uh, cycle, and then you have x two. Okay. Okay. Then if we remove alpha from gamma then we still have a path 
in G prime from x1 to x2 or x2 to x1. So this is why. So look at uh, the path you have. So if alpha appears here, so x to y or y to x, Oh, sorry, let's consider an easy example first. So if alpha is after x2 or before x1, so after you remove alpha, x1, x2 are still connected. You have paths from x1 to x2. Okay, now if you have alpha uh, appears in appears between x1 and x2 after you remove it then if you consider this is a cycle therefore actually you can go from x2 back to x1 in the other direction. Okay, then even if you remove alpha, it still gives you a path from x2 to x1. So this is a contradiction because we assume uh, alpha is a bridge. x1 and x2 are in different connected components after you remove alpha. Okay, so we are done. So this is a necessary condition. That means whenever you see a bridge in the graph, you can just claim there's no Hamilton cycle at all. And for the other direction, can we find some sufficient condition? So here is one due to Ori. Uh, actually, this is... Uh, an easily trackable condition, just like uh, uh, what we did in the for the Eulerian trails. So let G be a graph of order n. So uh, uh, the Ori property says that for all pairs of distinct vertices x and y that are not adjacent degree x degree x plus degree y is greater than or equal to n. n is the order And the motivation for um, raising up such condition is that uh, think about the complete graphs. So in that case, uh, each two vertices are connected. So you don't need to worry about the adjacency. adjacency. You only need to care about how to choose the vertices. Therefore, the problem is reduced to a permutation problem in that case and here so that indicate that if you have sufficient many uh, edges for each for each vertices then probably you will have a good chance to have a Hamilton cycle okay so this is a naive idea behind this but here for this one so actually he is uh, weaker than the uh, condition we just described that you have enoughly many uh, edges because they only care about the pairs of vertices not adjacent okay so this is a uh, subtlety and uh, from proof you see uh, the weak condition is sufficient to give you a uh, Hamilton cycle
but for for us, it's probably it's easier just to remember the condition get uh, uh, uh supply uh enough many edges for each vertex. So the theorem is uh, as follows. Suppose you have a graph with order n satisfies the ORI property, then G has a Hamilton cycle. So first thing we need to prove actually is G is connected. This is uh, not that trivial because as uh, if you look back at the assumption, we, uh, before we always assume G is connected, but here, and the ORI property, you don't need that. So we prove by contradiction. So otherwise, uh, we can partition V into two parts U and W such that no edges joining a vertex in U with a vertex in W Recall that uh, U and W might not be uh, the vertices set of two disconnected, oh, sorry, two connected components. So that might be, uh, they might be union or several disconnected components. But that matter is sufficient for our proof. And then let uh, denote the cardinality of W by S cardinality of U by R and let X in U and Y in W. Then let's consider, so uh, noted that X and Y are not adjacent. Okay, then you can then we can apply the ORI property and uh, then degree x plus degree y greater than or equal to n. But here you have another estimate from the disconnectivity of u and w, that is the verses uh, adjacent to x are contained in uh, u and uh, similarly adjacent to y are contained in w. Therefore, degree x less than or equal to the cardinality of u minus 1 and degree of y less than cardinality of w minus 1. And then you will have degree x plus degree y less than or equal to r minus plus s minus 2. Do you have a contradiction? So combine this, you have contradiction. Okay, therefore, G is connected. OK, next, to complete the graph, so complete the proof, uh, we describe uh, an algorithm to uh, find the cycle.
for constructing a Hamilton cycle in a graph uh, satisfies the Ori property. Uh, just as we said before, so in general, there's no algorithm to generate, uh, to search for a Hamilton cycle. But after you uh, prescribe some good condition, and the problem um, becomes better, and you just like you smooth it, smooth the problem, and then you can find an algorithm. I guess if you search online, there might be some other properties from different point of view, which also uh, guarantee an efficient algorithm to generate a Hamilton cycle. So if you have interest, you can look those problems. Okay, and uh, so the algorithm has uh, three steps. Mainly you have two steps. So step one, start with a uh, vertex. Uh, the tr the tr the choice of the vertex is not that important, and then construct a path by attaching adjacent vertices at either end, and then enlarge the path until it is impossible denoted by gamma y1, y2, ym. And here actually, so what does this mean? Uh, you can rephrase it in a more fancy language that is gamma is maximum in certain partial orders or paths. So for different paths in the graph G, you can uh, define a partial order. So for example, we say gamma 1 is less than or equal to gamma 2 if um, gamma 1 is obtained from gamma 2 by deleting uh, some, some edges. Okay, and uh, then for from the point of view of uh, the uh, enlarged pass until in, it's impossible, so that means uh, gamma is maximum in that partial order. Okay, I leave it to you. to understand the procedure. And not that hard, but you need to uh, really imagine that. Okay, uh, secondly, so we are going to, uh, actually we, can, we are going to do some new manipulation such that the gamma is enlarged uh, if it's not a whole, if it's not a Hamilton cycle. So check if y1 and the ym are adjacent. So if y1 and the ym are not adjacent, then go to step three, where we are going to do another extra o uh, operation so that it becomes better. Y1 and Ym are adjacent after that step. We will talk about later. And uh, otherwise, otherwise means if Y1 and Ym are adjacent, go to uh, 
uh, second step or step two. So two, if m is n, so then stop and uh, output the Hamilton cycle. Y1, Y2, Ym, Y1. So here the crucial thing is this is uh, uh, because we assume they are adjacent. We use the assumption that they are adjacent. And otherwise, So otherwise means if m is less than n strictly, otherwise go to step three. So step three, locate a vertex z not on gamma and uh, vertex yk on gamma such that D is adjacent to uh, YK. Okay, then we can replace gamma with the path or length M plus 1 given by Z YK Ym, y1, yk minus 1. So how to understand this? So suppose here You have y1, y2, yk, and on this side, ym. If you can find a point z such that z is adjacent to yk, okay, then you can draw a new path like this, you can go from uh, Z to YK and then along the purple path all the way to Y1. And then from Y1 to Y2 all the way back to YK. Okay, and after this step, you, we see that the path, uh, the length of the path is increased by one. Okay, then here, to do this key step, there's a, a statement we must prove that is Z exists. So how to prove this? We only it suffices to show that G is connected. Okay, if G is connected for some point outside the gamma, then there must be some path from uh, that point to a point on the uh, path, and then you take the nearest one. Okay, how to? So I leave it to you to fill out all the details why z exists okay now step three actually the step three just like uh, step three or step two like uh, the third step or step two like after you have z y k all the way to y k minus one then what is next step now z and y k 
yk minus 1 are not adjacent in general. Then how to deal with that? You need to do a little bit modification such that you still have the starting point and the ending point are adjacent. So to do this, this is the uh, uh, most tricky part of the algorithm. So we need to locate a vertex yk such that y1 and yk are adjacent and yk minus 1 and ym are adjacent. So in other words, if you write down y1, y2, yk minus 1, yk, ym, and by the assumption, y1 and ym are not connected, are not adjacent, and then the adjacent one is uh, Let's see, y1 and yk, yk minus 1 and ym. OK, then how to deal with that? So we do the following. So replace gamma with the pass. y1, y2 yk minus 1, ym, ym minus 1, yk. So in another way, it's going to say you cut between yk minus 1 and yk. Step, and then you reverse the order. Oh, the second, uh, a uh, half of the pass and then touch back, attach it back. Okay, then after that you see that uh, Y1 and the YK are adjacent and yk minus 1, ym are the adjacent uh, from the picture. Okay. So the remaining task is to show that uh, such k exists. So prove, since gamma is maximal, that is, you cannot enlarge gamma by, by attaching uh, vertices adjacent to the two end points. The vertices of G adjacent to Y1 is contained in Y2 to Ym minus 1, and the same thing for Ym. Okay, then if you uh, draw a picture in this way, on the left-hand side, you have y1, ym. On the right-hand side, you have y2, ym minus 1. And then in between, you have some edge connecting them. Oh, now we are going to use the array property. And uh, suppose y1 and uh, yk are not, sorry, suppose for k from 2 to m minus 1, y1 and yk are not adjacent, or yk minus 1 and ym are not adjacent. Then, uh, 
there are at most so I will leave this as black blank and uh, later on fill in more at most uh, certain edges uh, incident to y1 or ym so we list all the possibilities y1 y2 y1 y3 y2 ym y1 y m minus 1 y m minus 2 y m and then last one is y m minus 1 y m so notice that uh, for each uh, horizontal line you can only choose at most one edge okay and here so you have at most m minus three edges and here you have one here you have one so the box is less than or equal to m minus one plus one plus one which is m minus one since m is strictly less than uh, m minus strictly less than n otherwise you are done so this is Oh, sorry. Uh, it's less than or equal to n. Okay, so you have this. But on the other hand, we know that uh, on the other hand, we know that degree x. Uh, y1 plus degree ym should be at least uh, n because y1 ym are not adjacent by the assumption and on the other hand degree y1 plus degree ym is the number of edges incident to y1 and ym so it's box so it's less than or equal to m minus one you have conjugation therefore we are done okay then remaining you can show that the algorithm after the whole uh, repetition of the algorithm you always increase the length by one length of the path by one and it will stop only if you have m verses in the path. Okay, then this is a algorithm to generate Heimlich cycle for you. Okay, then uh, immediately corollary is that uh, if you don't want to bother with adjacent property. Uh, you can just enlarge it to any pair of points. So a graph of order n in which each vertex has degree at uh, least n over 2 has uh, Hamilton. Cycle. Yeah, you can ver because you can verify all all properties easily, and then uh, if you lower the uh, lower bound by one, then you will have a uh, Hamilton pass. So a graph or order n in which the sum of the degree so each pair of non adjacent vertices is at least 
m minus one has a Hamilton pass. And the proof is first you show the connectivity in the same way, and then secondly you just uh, uh, revise the algorithm because in this step we don't need to uh, guarantee the last step uh, have the adjacency in the last step when m is n. So you need to modify the uh, algorithm a little bit. Of course, we need that property in between because otherwise you cannot insert d so that your pass in increase the length of your pass increased by one. But at the last step, you don't need to have this property. Okay, I leave it to you to uh, work out the details. And then another question is, uh, can you find an example set your the bound in array property so in other words can you find a certain example that the uh, so how to do that for each, the, uh, there's a pair of, uh, okay, so let me rigorously form in this. Uh, there is, uh, okay, can we find, find an example of, graphs uh, or graph or order n uh, such that each pair of non adjacent vertices has the property that x and y has property that degree x plus degree y greater than or equal to n1 and there is no Hamilton cycle so th this question just check if our property is uh, optimal in this direction Oh, similarly, you can find a similar question. So can we find an example or graph or order n such that each pair of non-adjacent vertices has degree x plus degree y at least m minus 2 and uh, there is no Hamilton. Pass. So this is a similar question. So uh, this is a, a typical way of thinking problems in, or raising up questions in research. Just like whenever you have something, you ask how good it is, how far it from the optim optimal case. Okay. Okay, and uh, we end up with the uh, following uh, real problem. So this is called a uh, traveling salesperson problem. So a topological version is that a uh, salesperson is planning a business trip. To certain 
cities and uh, then bring him back. So, and the key other condition is that uh, between some pairs of cities, there are uh, a direct uh, air service. Some are not. And so this is just an exact question is, so the question is, uh, can he plan the trip so that he flies uh, into each city exactly once? So this question, why I call it topological? Because you don't have any information about how long the trip is, how much it takes. Okay, you only care about how many times you visit or you take on or take and take off the plane, the airplane. So this is just uh, the Hamilton cycle problem. But the question is, uh, this is not so real because in reality we, are, we should consider the following uh, two functionals so first L is a minimal or all admissible pass or admissible work or let's say pass gamma x0, x1, xm. Admissible means uh, you start and end with same vertex x0. And uh, minimum or what? Minimum or summation of the length of each uh, edge. So here you put on some weight. Okay, and uh, so a small remark is, if weight is constantly one, then this is the original Hamilton cycle problem. And secondly, you might care about the cost instead of the traveling hours. So if you are a very rich businessman, so you don't care about the uh, money, you care, about, you care more about the uh, hours you spend on the trip. So you think of the, uh, the, uh, the functional L. But if you are not so rich, you more care more about the money. So you can, we define the following. Functional gamma x zero x one x m and then the summation is cost for each uh, one way trip. So this is also weight, and you see from from mathematical point of view, you find that L and C actually there's no big difference. The actual information can be described in a very similar pattern. So those are called weight function. Okay, uh, I think after we finish the materials in graph theory in this textbook, probably we'll have one, or, uh, one week or more to discuss those kind of things. This is called network, which is uh, advanced version of the graph. So network means 
on each edge, you have weight function rho. And uh, by constructing different functional, we will consider optimization of such functional questions. OK, so uh, I will stop here. Next time, we will discuss another very interesting uh, object in uh, graph theory that's called uh, uh, trees. Okay, bye.